Welcome to the unveiling with Pastor Femi Olale. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, who are we to honor? Who are we to honor? Now let me let us look at this quickly. Amen. Now, the Bible teaches that we are to honor first one another. Amen. We are to honor one another. Romans chapter number 12. Romans 12, verse 10. Remember, I've told you, honor means with, in the, um, with to give way to something, to give preference to something. Hallelujah. All right, in 1 Timothy 5, 17, the word honor that he made, which means it means something that has evaluation. All right, the price of a thing. So that means that you treat a, the person being cognizant of the person's value. You understand that? So there's evaluation to that person. All right, so now, who do we honor? Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Can we read one to go? It says what? Lord, come on, guys, louder. Be what? Kindly affectionate one to another. With what? With brotherly love. In honor, preferring. Are you seeing that? In honor, preferring one another. So that means I should look at Wilson and have an understanding of his valuation. Praise God. What is his valuation? The blood of Christ. Christ died for him. So that means I should treat him, amen, understanding that his value is tied to the blood of Christ. And because his value is tied to the blood of Christ, I should treat him with respect. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you following? So that means that for me to treat someone with honor, all right, in the body of Christ, I need to first of all understand the body of Christ. Come on, praise God. Praise God. All right. I need to be honest. For example, let me give you an example. Imagine if you knew a lady, you know, sometimes I, I, I think in this part we, um, it's, it's not just this part, it's all over the world. We actually treat the woman, women terribly. Really, really terribly. I mean, it's really terrible. And I, th- I think we shouldn't do that as, as believers, as those in the body of Christ. We should never do that. You find out that, have you noticed something, guys? Listen, listen. Have you noticed that a lady who has had a bad past, maybe before she came to the Lord, she sleeps around or has a, you know, notorious past in a sexual nature, and she comes into Christ. How many of you noticed that that stigma, we don't let it go? Come on, church. You know now. You know what I'm saying? You don't let it go. You don't let it go. But the guy, the stigma is not as much. As much. Praise God. Now, honor means... That the moment that lady or that guy who had a negative past comes into Christ, amen, I am not to refer or relate to him or her according to her past or his past. Why? The valuation of this person, glory to God, is now what? What Christ has done for them. Are you following what I'm saying? What Christ has done for them. So, whether or not this person slept with 1,000 men, now the person is in Christ. She's a new creation. All things are what? Passed away. Hallelujah. Beyond all things are what? Become new. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So my attitude, my conduct towards this person must be based on that understanding. Is it clear? Based on that understanding. I must never refer to their past. Never. To do that is to dishonor Christ. Glory to God. To do that is to dishonor them. Glory to God. Glory to God. So it says what? That we should honor one another. So we are supposed to honor one another. So look at your neighbor and say, I honor you. Come and say, I honor you. I honor you. I believe the best of you. I believe great things about you. I believe God's hand is upon you. I believe you are blessed. I believe you are blessed. I believe you are a success. Hallelujah. Praise God. Honor them with words. Amen. Now, the second. The second thing you are to honor is your body. Your what? Your body. Your body. First Thessalonians chapter number four. 
First Thessalonians chapter number 4. We're almost done here. Can we read? It says what? Can we read one to go? It says what? That everyone... Okay, let's start from verse um, 2 so we can get some context. Okay, yeah, one. Let's look at that. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus Christ, that as you have received of us how you ought to walk, and to what? Please, God. You will abound more and more. Now, verse 2 now says what? For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Now, verse 3, everybody read, it says what? For this is the will of God, even your what? Sanctification, that ye should what? Abstain from what? Fornication. Now, verse 4 now says what? That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and that your body. Honor. Having a right estimation and value of your body. And because you have an understanding of how valuable your body is to God, you are very particular about what happens in your body or with your body. Praise God. For example, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Turn to 1 Corinthians 3. <sighs> ha, 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 glory. Can we read 1 Corinthians 3, 16? says what? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth where in you. Can you see that? The Spirit of God dwelleth in you. All right? In you. Very important for us to get this, that the Spirit of God dwells in the Christian. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 15, 2 Corinthians 6. Amen. Amen. Honor means you have a right estimation... Amen. Honoring your body means you have a nice estimation and evaluation of your body. Look at it. And what con no first Corinthians six fifteen. Amen. First Corinthians six fifteen. He says what? Quickly, 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 quickly. I have my Bible on reading. Can we want to go? It says what? Know ye not that your what? Come on, church, talk to me. Know ye not that your what? Bodies are the members of Christ. He said, no, no, not your spirit. No. He said, your bodies. Your body. He says, are the members of Christ. Now, this is powerful. What that means is that the power of God, the power of Christ is in your body. It means that the life of Christ is in your body. Are you following? Glory to God. It means the power of God, the life of Christ is in your body. It means that heaven and all the riches of heaven is in your body. That's what it means. It means that your body has been made the headquarters, glory to God, of the Godhead. Your body. He says, know you not that your bodies are the members of Christ. He now says, shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? Can you see that? He's telling you that an right estimation of the value of your body to God. Of your purpose. Of the purpose of your body to God. Hallelujah. Will determine what you do and what you don't do with your body. So to dishonor your body is to take your body. Amen. And present it for fornication with the woman you are not really married to. To dishonor your body is to take your body, praise God. Despite having a spouse and present it to someone who is not your wife. You are dishonoring your body. So in 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul says that everyone knows how to what? Carry and present their body in sanctification and in honor. Right estimation. Right valuation of your body. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. So now, you honor your body. What else do you honor? Amen. You honor God's word. God's word. Now you see, remember we said... That to honor means to revert, to treat as special, to treat as what? Highly what? Extinct. To treat with what? Great respect. All right? Now, when you honor God's word, you believe that it can do what it says it can do. Praise the Lord. 
So a man or a woman that highly esteems God's word, amen, would act on it. Will believe, glory to God, in its potency. Will build his life on it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. He will build his life on it. Look at Isaiah chapter 55. So when you read the word of God and not do it, you dishonor the word because you don't believe that what he says is true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, for example, if I told you that, listen, uh, at the end of that road, if you turn to the left, you are sharing one million naira there. Whether or not you are going to take my instruction is if you what? You believe me. Is that correct? Exactly. It's if you, t- how, how, how well you esteem my words. Glory to God. Glory to God. Honor God's word. Now look at this. Isaiah 55. From verse 8. Can we read one to go? It says what? For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Now he's talking to a natural man here. Amen? He now says verse 10. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, glory to God, and bread to the eater. 11. Everybody read one to go. It says what? So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the testimony of God about his words. Hallelujah. This is God's boasting about his word. He said, my word, once it comes out of my mouth, can't come back without performing what I said you to do. So, if you honor God's word, you are saying, hey, God's word is able to do what he says it will do. God's word is able to come good every single time. Hallelujah. So, when you believe God's word and you give honor to the word, you are going to build your life around the world. You are going to act on it. Knowing it cannot fail. Praise God. Honor. Glory to God. Honor. Honor. So dishonor God's words, amen, is not to act on it. Because it means that you don't treat it as special. You don't venerate it. You do not think, glory to God, that the word of God can do what it says it can do. So what do you do? Make a practice, make a culture of venerating God's word. Praise God. Of honoring God's word. Make a practice of it. Hallelujah. You wake up in the morning and say, Father, I thank you for your word over my life will not fail. Father, I thank you for your... I mean, the word will never fail. I thank you for all the prophecies that have come out of the mouth of the servants will not fail over my life. I thank you they will all come to pass. Because your word, once it comes out of your lips, it cannot fail. You know, there is something called waging war through prophecy. Are you following? All right? Because you see, let me just... There are some folks that prophecy, prophecy words are spoken over them. All right? And when the prophetic word is spoken over them, they wait for a time. If it doesn't come to pass, they throw it away. You understand? They throw it away. They say, ah, no, no, no. No, sir. No, man. Listen to me. The prophecy concerning the incarnation of Jesus Christ took 4,000 years to come to pass. 4,000 years. Glory to God. 4,000 years. Because once the word came out, there was nothing that was going to stop it. It was going to come into manifestation. Hallelujah. What you do is when a prophetic word has been given to you, you don't let go of it. Hallelujah. You say, Father, I thank you for every word of prophecy that has come out from any of your sermon, even if it's just one. I thank you for those words of prophecy will come to pass. I thank you for the earth receives those words. Hallelujah. And gives manifestation to them. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. for your, I understand. You keep saying your words will not fade over my life. You keep declaring it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because you have reverence, have respect to God's words. Amen. 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 You have respect. You give, you understand, you have respect. Because God's word says it, you're fine. Amen. Amen. You're fine. Whenever they're talking about, oh, the, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I was seeing when they were talking about all this stuff about INEC and elections, then people just began to, you see, they, let me tell you something. Me, I'm always very careful of my pro- of things that come out of my mouth. I'm very careful. You understand? I'm very, very careful. There's nothing like joke. Glory to God. I mean, joke. No, 
People will say, ah, we are going to run away to Canada. Hey. Ah, we are running, you know. Hey, hey. We are running to Canada. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. I'm not running with you. Running to Canada. Hey. No, I will visit. Glory to God. Amen. I will buy houses there. Amen. Glory to God. Even in America and so on. But to run away in flights. Because we are running from poverty. No, that's not my portion in Jesus' name. To, eh? God forbid. No, no, no. Why? Because what that means is that I am saying that the blessings of God are geographical. Glory to God. Now, this Canada we are going, what are we going to go and do there? Is it not to walk? We're going to now go and walk there. I'm working hard. I'm working hard. Then we'll be paying 45% taxes. I'm working for the government. Then we borrow to buy a car. Borrow to buy a house. Hallelujah. Then we take picture. Yeah, Canada life. With snow. Canada life. Wherever. Go with the God. The Bible says, you understand? It says, wherever, whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatsoever he doeth. I, 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 Hallelujah. Wherever I find myself, I prosper. Amen. Why? Because I am a move of the spirit. Hallelujah. I am a move of heaven. Glory to God. Wherever, whatever I do, I prosper. Glory to God. I'm not running somewhere so I can prosper. If I'm running there, it means that God is limited. It means that God lives there and not here. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Glory to God. Glory to God. Give honor to his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a difference between running abroad and abroad running to you. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Abroad running to you. They will take jets to come to invest in your business. They will say, ah, we want to hear what you are. They want to invest. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Then you offer them stock options. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But don't limit God in your mind. Don't limit God. Don't dishonor his word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't dishonor his word. Don't dishonor the resources of heaven that has been given to you. Hallelujah. Say out loud, I believe God's word. Believe Come on, loud, I believe God's word. Believe God's, word. God's word is able to do what he says he can do. Hallelujah. Say out loud, I prosper in this land. Loud, I prosper in this land. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. So we honor God's words. Amen. You give honor, reverence to his word. That, that, that attitude to Bible study, you must have that attitude that as I want to read my Bible, I am in, I'm, I'm coming before the eternal source of wisdom and I'm going to receive tutelage. Glory to God from the word. So that means I'm not going to be flippant with my Bible study. I'm going to take my time to read it. I'm going to read it with the mindset that as I open my mind to the words in this book, I'm receiving wisdom. Hallelujah. 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 So that's why when you're reading the book, all right, and you're reading it with respect, you come with your notepad and you want to take notes. Praise God. And so you are listening to a message. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are not listening to, listen to the message so you can sleep. No. You are listening to it so that you can learn. Glory to God. Are you following? Now that's honor. So the attitude of honor always provokes and activates the release of blessings. The release of grace. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. And so you honor God's word. Now, that's number three. Is that correct? Number four, you are the fourth, the fourth people or fourth, uh, fourth person, your honor must be bestowed, must the gathering of the saints. A church. Gathering of the saints. Have you heard that stuff? We are the church. We don't need to gather. Have you heard that stuff? Have you heard it? Say, oh, we are the church. Whenever I hear all this woke, woke, um, <laughs> Christians, I will just listen. I'm like, wow, I didn't know anyone could actually package nonsense as beautifully as that. You understand? Nonsense. He says, Oh, I'm, I'm the church. Oh, we are the church. 
So wherever you are, you are the church. So you can stay in the house, you are the church. Listen to me. There was never a place in scripture where they were using church to describe one person. <laughs> Even Jesus Christ said, where two or three are gathered in my name. Amen. It is a where you alone are gathered. One person cannot gather. Can one person gather? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> one person can gather now. You will see it. You hear, and the church that is in your house, never was it one person. Ecclesia means a gathering. Ecclesia, church, it's not even a religious word. It's Greek. It means a gathering. People gather together. That's what Ecclesia means. A people. Glory to God. So that's why they define it as the church of Jesus Christ. Are you following? So that means the gathering of Jesus Christ. This people gather because of Jesus. So any declaration where you are saying, oh, no, you see, because you see, to separate yourself from the fellowship of the saints is to dishonor the church. And to dishonor the church is to dishonor Christ. Because Christ is the, you know, is the head of the church. Why? Because, remember I said, to honor means to what? To respect. Amen. To what? Highly what? Esteem. Amen. Amen. All right. And to what? Place a valuation on something. Which means that if you respect highly esteem and place a high value on something or a people, you will always want to associate with those people. Come on, church. Is that correct? So, you will not want to associate with the people if you what? Place a low value on them. Do not respect them. And do not think that there is anything in them that is of value to you. Praise the Lord. So, when people say, I am the church, what they are saying is, actually, I know who I am. I am of value, but the church, nah. How many people say that stuff? They will say, listen... I love Jesus and I love what Jesus represents, but the church of Jesus, ah, nah, the church. I remember that stuff. I remember people say that. The church, ah, you church people. I don't associate with church people. You are arrogant. You are arrogant. You say, oh, the church did me wrong. The church is filled, of, filled with hypocrites. Well, so I love people in your place of work, but I, see, I don't see you saying you're not going there. Praise the Lord. So I don't see people in your class. I don't see you stop going to class. When you stop going to church because of the hypocrisy of certain people in the church, you are revealing your own hypocrisy. It's the truth. Nobody is perfect. Nobody in church, no one said church was perfect. Glory to God. Inside this church, hearing to me, there might have been someone that fornicated in the last two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Glory to God. There's someone that told a lie yesterday. Glory to God. Somebody here yeah, might have played Beth Ninja. <laughs> Glory to God. It's very, very possible. Amen. I mean, somebody here might have been, when we are saying, let us pray, he's saying, Father, 2.5, something, something, something. The Father, let me, je-. that can be his prayer. Yeah, we are not perfect. Church is not perfect. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So please stop casting stones on people's road to development. You understand? They are developing. It is not when they are developing, they are casting stones. Give them time to grow. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Thanks for listening to this message. We hope you were blessed. For other messages, please visit our website www.oikiasc.org Thank you.